Hello YouTube, welcome back to this week's video. This is 2E0 IQJ. So this week's video we're going to take a close look at the Arrow antenna. And I had this in the bike stand last week, or the other week, and we was doing um, some 2 meter SSB. I was going to take a closer look at the bike stand itself, the connections on the Arrow antenna, and the connections I use for my homemade uh, power leads. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so this is the bike stand we've got, just a generic bike stand. Got it out of Halfords, around about 32 quid when I got mine. Got one a few years back, so probably going up now, 50 odd quid. And it's just sitting there on the grass. And here, you can adjust it. So you can, bloody noisy motorbike, can adjust the height there to make it higher. And here, you can adjust it as well. If I undo it, make it looser, you can adjust the, the grip so you can have it that way. Then you can put a fishing pole antenna in. You can have it that way, you can put a beam in, or the arrow beam. And if you can turn it up, then it, it won't move there. And here, if you tight, loosen it a little bit, you can then turn it round to your desired position and once you've got it in position you can then just turn it like that and the good thing about this on the other antenna it's got a foam handle and these grips here won't cause any damage to the foam handle grips in when you take it away you'll see the indents on the foam handle but it won't cause any damage whatsoever so let's go and put the arrow 2 antenna into the uh, bike stand Okay, so the Arrow 2 antenna is in the bike stand, just sitting in there. Use the clamp there, like I said earlier, to tighten it up. And then when you undo this, you can go up and down and move it left and right and so on. The connections for the Arrow antenna are actually BNC. If you have a look here, there's a BNC connection there. And there's the BNC connection there. Now the longer cable is for two meters. So you've got your three radials there. And the shorter cable, which goes into there, is for 70 centimeters and this antenna is great for working satellites so there's a 70 centimeter part there 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 and there and these are the two meter parts but over time the cable does tend to go wrong or have some problems where you can't make contact or they go weaker there but you can always uh, pull this down unscrew that you can then use your own cable for two meters and if you need to use it on 70 cms use the cable on 70 cms but I have seen a lot of YouTube videos with a Comet Diplexer on there to use the two um, antenna on uh, two frequencies on one, one radio. Okay, so the battery I use is a Turnergy 5 amp hour, 3 cell, 11.1 .1 volt LiPo. And when you charge them, you need to charge using the balance connector there. And the weak point of these batteries is that the balance connector cables do end up breaking, but you can easily fix them time together and put a bit of heat shrink around it. The connection on the end of the battery is an XT60 there which is what I've got on my homemade power leads. Now all I've done is just solder the XT60 on the end of the power lead and some heat shrink around it. It's been on there about a year or so. The heat shrink is starting to come off so I'm have to put some more on it at some, some point. Now where do I get these power leads from? Well I picked a power supply up at a boot sale that fitted one of the radios. Didn't want to use it, just used the, snip the cable off, stripped it down put it in the front of the power supply and then use a DVM to check which wire was plus and which wire was the minus then soldered it on to the XT60 connector there and the FT290R is a centre negative which is unusual um, connection on there so make sure you make sure you, when you solder the wire you do it as centre negative it's much better than using the internal batteries uh, the C cells it'd be a lot lighter and these don't worry anything you can take them out and about and this cable here it's actually from my FT817, which is what I use instead of using the internal battery pack or the uh, AA batteries. Lot, lot, uh, get a lot longer run time when you're out and about using this. I've had this, this uh, battery into the uh, FT817, used a probe antenna and where it stays on just 5 watts. Now if you want to run a longer cable on the other antenna, you can just use some PL259 cable and all near RG58 cable with PL249 connections on the end and you've got the BNC plug there which fits into the uh, arrow antenna and you can also use um, a Comet Diplex on that arrow antenna as well I've got one of them somewhere, I haven't actually played with it yet but like I said earlier in the video, the cables tend to go break on the arrow antenna after years of putting pulling them in, pulling them out I've seen a lot of YouTubers that have got their own cables plugged into the arrow antenna and they've also got the Diplexes so I'll try one at some point on my arrow antenna Let's go and do a demo of uh, the, air um, the air antenna in the bike stand receiving the beacon station. I'll show you what effect it has when you start uh, moving it about. 
Okay, so the Arrow 2 antenna is in the bike stand. I've got the extension cable connected with the PLT509 BNC adapter on there. It's into the back of the FT A17, and I've got a beacon that I'm picking up on 144 uh, 430. It should get stronger when we move the antenna either this way, so this way, or this way. So let's move it this way first and see what we get. Weaker. If we go the other way, it should get a lot stronger. We should start seeing the signal creep up. There we go. It seems to be a lot stronger that way. Then you can adjust the bike stand. So you can have it either that way. Adjust it again before we go back to where we were. That way. So the old signal is nice and strong, and that's the two meter beacon. So here we go, the arrow antenna, or the O2 antenna. Put it into the bike stand, and I showed you all the connections on the arrow antenna, what the weak spots are, because the connections do, do tend to break over years of use, pulling them in, pulling them out. I mean, you don't want to use the antenna, you can just unscrew it, and it fits neatly into a tripod bag. Now, the connections I use is XT60, because that's because my battery's got it. And you can use an XT90, you can use a Dean's connector. And this on this cable here that I made up is an XT60. All I did was plug the, um, got the cable off the old power supply, which didn't work anymore. Stripped the ends down, placed it into the power supply, and checked with my DVM what was centre negative and centre positive. Then I soldered on the connection. Now with the FT290R, that is a different connection, it's centre negative. As I found out when I first got the radio, I think it don't work. So I tried to send a negative and it worked. So yeah, using the drone batteries and these cables, I've got one, well, these cables made up for my RS918 radio. I've got one made up for the FT290R. I've also got one made up for my FT817, which is uh, this cable here. Because I ain't got to put the internal batteries in the 817 or use a battery pack and so on. Just take that around with the battery. Now you can use a different type of battery. As long as it's 11.1 volts, you can use a, um, a four amp, three amp, which is a bit cheaper. The more amperage you get in the battery, the more expensive it tends to be. And that was a turnage one, I think it was about £20 or £25. Um, if I buy batteries to use on the radio, I also want to be able to use them in my radio controlled car. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it of some use, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. It tells YouTube I'm doing a good job. If you don't like the video, the other button seems to work too. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. This is 2E0 IQJ73 for now.